Hello there, and welcome to another episode of 3D Christianity. My name is John Hathaway, and I'm your host here. Now, today we're going to be talking about why most Christians are not experiencing genuine transformation and victory in their lives over sin and things like that. Um, so before we get into that, I just want to give a quick thank you and a shout out to those of you who shared my last video. Uh, last week um, on the episode I recorded, I asked for those of you who are my regular viewers who enjoy this channel to go ahead and share this video to someone who hasn't watched the channel before. And so that way we can try to grow the subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers by the end of the year. And we went from 37 subscribers last week to 43 subscribers, I believe it is now. So um, just in a week, you know, gained six new subscribers, and that's awesome. I just, I, I really wanted to just give you guys a shout out and let you know that you're awesome and I appreciate you. Um, now, now let's go ahead and talk about the episode that we're going to be doing, which is about transformation and why most Christians are not experiencing transformation in their lives. Um, now, before we do that, I do want to read a passage to you. This is going to be Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So I'm going to read that really quick, and then we're going to get into this. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So that was Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And the reason I chose this verse is because I think it shows a really good example of um, the example that Christ has set for us, and this is the example that we can learn from to get victory and transformation in our lives and things like that. So, um, the reason that I'm doing this video is because, um, personally, uh, this information, if I knew this, if I, uh, had this information and I was bought into it, um, probably five to seven years ago, um, I think I would have avoided a lot of pain in my life, a lot of suffering, um, and maybe, and this is not to dwell in the past or anything like that, and, and that's actually one of the things we're going to address in this video, but, um, but this is something, if, if there's anyone out there, if any of you watching this might be in that, um, in that stage that I was in, where I, where it didn't seem like there was any light at the end of the tunnel, and, you know, it seems like you're just kind of, um, you're not really living for much of a purpose, but you're just, um, and you're not really seeing much victory over sin in your life and things like that. Well, that's why I'm wanting to do this video to give you guys some hope and to, um, hopefully encourage you to grow and to transform and to experience victory and sin over your lives and things like that. So, um, I have a few things here that I'm going to be talking about, and it has to do with our mindset. And I think our mindset is one of the most important things when it comes to this subject of transformation. You're not going to you're not going to experience true transformation in your life if you don't have the proper mindset. Um, and there's uh, I started out with three different things when I was making the notes for this video, three different three different things when it comes to our mindset, but uh, there was a fourth one that I thought of as I was walking down, so I wrote that one down as well. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to our mindset, um, just a, a mindset that we get that we need to get away from and that we need to change, would be um, the thought that our appearances are important. And um, this is something that uh, that most of mankind has an issue with. It's not just Christians, but I think a lot of times Christians can get really caught up in appearances and like, uh, you know, trying to make sure that you, um, that you're showing, being, you know, being the light unto the world, which is, you know, obviously that's a good thing we want to be, 
a light to the world. Jesus says that you are the light of the world if you're a Christian. Um, but we, we do so in ways like the way that we dress or maybe, um, you know, just like not having a bunch of piercings and tattoos and, uh, dyeing our hair funny colors and things like that. Um, making sure that we're, uh, dressing very in like a non-flashy way and stuff like that. And sometimes even Christians, I think, can can dress a little bit flashy and think that they're being godly or righteous when they do it like um and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with necessarily like wearing suits and ties and things like that um but when your identity is wrapped up in that and you know you're you're attached to the way that you dress uh in your appearance and you know making sure that you you wear the nicest um uh, you know, I'm trying to think of like Stacy Adams dress shoes or, um, trying to think of like an expensive brand of suit, maybe like a Stafford suit or something like that. I, I know there's probably more expensive brands than that, but you get the idea. Um, and you know, we, we focus on like, okay, how does our family look when we're going to the store? Are they running around and like knocking stuff off the shelves or are they, uh, you know, quiet little, meek little angels that are, you know, that don't speak unless they're spoken to and things like that. So I think we can get a little bit, um, um, we can get a little bit hyper-focused on our appearances and about, you know, trying to display a perfect image of ourselves to the world. And that often causes us to um, neglect the internal part of ourselves that, um, that is actually causing us, uh, that's causing most of the sin in our lives. And you may, you've probably heard, um, you know, in the Bible where it, it says that, um, the Lord or man sees on the, looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord sees our hearts. So essentially that's saying that God sees who we really are on the inside. He, he knows our motives. He knows how we tick and he knows um, what our true desires are and how you know wicked we really are, how deceitful our hearts really are, and everything like that. Um, so when we get to focusing on appearances, we get to think that somehow our appearance is directly linked to how spiritual we are on the inside, and that can that can cause us a lot of um, it can cause you to. Uh, to really have a, um, it, it can basically deceive you into thinking that you're more righteous than you really are. And I think that that was a case for me, um, definitely like coming out of, I went to Bible college and so like when I was in Bible college and probably coming out of Bible college, uh, you know, I was, I was wrapped up in a lot of that, like, you know, trying to wear nice suits and ties and things like that to church and, uh, trying to make sure I had a good testimony, you know, making sure I wasn't listening to any kind of uh, rock music or worldly music in any case um, around certain people and things like that. Um, and that was, that did more harm than good to me, or than good for me in the long run, I believe. Um, and so, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. The next thing that I want to talk about with our mindset is that we tend to deal with our problems reactively instead of proactively. So think of something like, um, you know, if you're driving a car, you have you have a car, and instead of taking it to the shop, uh, which uh, sometimes I'm bad about this, about not taking my car to the shop as, as often as I should. But instead of taking your car to the shop like either every 5,000 miles or every three months or how, however often it, I know it depends on how much you drive it, how long of distances you drive every day and stuff like that. But instead of, you know, taking your car for the routine maintenance and oil changes and things like that, um, you wait until the check engine light comes on and you... Um, and then you have to pay more money to fix these bigger problems because you're not, 
getting the routine maintenance done that needs to be done um, proactively, you know, like preventive maintenance. You've probably heard the term preventive maintenance. And um, so we tend to be, we tend to not, uh, most Christians tend to respond to like when we have sin in our lives, we tend to treat treat it reactively. Like we realize we're, uh, we fall in some kind of sin and then, you know, we, uh, we try to clean up our lives. We try, or we try to do something, um, like if you, you do something that you're not supposed to, and then, uh, maybe you'll like pray a little bit longer that day, or you'll read your Bible. You'll read an extra chapter of the Bible or something like that. And it makes you, uh, you know, you think that because you did that, um, a little bit of extra stuff that that somehow covers for the sin that you did. But um, the way that we should be looking, and, and that doesn't work in the long run, by the way. I'm not saying that, you, I mean, you should ask for forgiveness of your sins, and it's never a bad thing to read more of the Bible, to take more time in the day to read your Bible. You should be doing those things. But um, instead of uh, being reactive towards uh, how we, t towards when we sin and stuff like that, and we, um, take all these extra measures after, after the fact, why don't, why aren't we going and trying to figure out, well, why, why did I do this sin? Is there a problem in my heart? Is there, um, is there something going on in my, uh, is there something that's causing stress or, um, anxiety in my life that's causing me to, to do this sin or something like that? So, um, we should be treating our sin, the, the issues in our life and in our heart and stuff like that. We should be dealing with those proactively instead of reactively. And, um, that was definitely an issue in my life in the past. And, um, I know I probably still, it probably still can be that way sometimes now, but, uh, but I'm trying to learn to transform and, um, going about it in a proactive sense has been very helpful for me. Um, now the third one I have here is that the third mindset that we have issue that we have is that we haven't yet died to ourselves. A lot of us, um, who are born again, Christians, you know, we've truly, we've, um, we've placed our faith in Christ and we're genuine children of God. We've been born again and everything like that but sometimes it, it seems like we a lot of times we trust Christ with our eternal state you know we trust him to take us to heaven for our sins but we don't we don't truly trust in him fully to um, expose our sins and expose us and to uh, allow uh, our allow ourselves to be crucified with Christ and to die to ourselves and this is probably this is probably the one of the hardest ones out of these four things that I'm going to be talking about is just um, learning to die to yourself. And and I think most people probably won't learn this until they have some kind of crisis in their own life or uh, you experience um, you know some kind of tragedy or some or you're just experiencing a lot of failure and, um, you know, you realize that, um, uh, that, that you just can't do this on your own and that you need something higher than you. You need something above you to be able to get you out of the mess that you're in. And that's, that's what, um, that's where I came to when I, uh, realized that, there, there was a time in my life when it seemed like there wasn't any light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, so, um, and I learned that, and this is something, I mean, I haven't, I wouldn't say I learned it as in like I've mastered it, but it's something that I'm learning more and more every day is that I need to die to myself. And this is, this is not a one-time thing. So like I said, it's not something I've learned. It's something that I'm learning and I'm having to try to do it every day is to die to myself. And there's probably going to be something every day, um, that, that I'm going to have to die to in my own life, um, in order to get victory and to, and you know, 
in the Bible it says that um, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And one of the things that light does is it exposes us. It, it exposes sin and ex it exposes us when uh, with, with the sin that we have and everything like that. And if we don't die to ourselves and uh, you know we try to keep some of that sin alive and breathing and maybe we try to tame it or we try to um, you know we try to hide it or just conceal it and stuff like that. Well, when we do that, we're not allowing the light of Christ to um, to have access to a hundred percent of us and to be alive in us completely. Uh, maybe He is in you for your salvation, but maybe He's He doesn't have full um, He doesn't have full access to your life. You're not allowing Him full access to. Um, to cleanse you of your sin and to expose the sin that's in you. So, um, so I would hate for you to have to go through some kind of tragedy or, or personal crisis or something like that. Um, but if you can, if you can avoid that suffering and just learn to submit to Christ your whole life and submit your attachments, like what, whatever you are, um, this is probably... Like I said, this is one of the hardest ones to learn, and most of the time you learn it from experience. But whatever it is that you are super attached to, maybe it's a besetting sin, or maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's your ego, maybe it's your your position at work, or maybe it's, um, I don't know, fill in the blank. But whatever it is that you're the most attached to, um, I would just suggest give that to God. Uh, I'm not saying in every circumstance that you need to take that out of your life completely, but give it to God if it, and, and tell God, you know, if this is something that you have to take from me in order for me to be, um, for me to be fully surrendered to you and for you to have full reign over my life, then take it from me and do what you will with my life. That's that's what our mindset should be, <clears throat> um, and that's that's one of the most crucial things to to be able to have any kind of victory in your life or to be able to transform, is to learn to die to yourself and uh, you know let go of your ego, let go of whatever that besetting sin is, let let go of whatever it is that's possessing you, and you know we don't. Um, I think probably most of us would agree that. You know, we don't believe that uh, demons can possess you if you're a born-again Christian, but you can still be possessed by things. Um, you can be possessed by uh, material possessions, or um, you can be possessed by... Sometimes it's your religion. Sometimes it's your, your good works. <laughs> sometimes it's your, um, your, your own righteousness. You can be so attached to that. And you can be so attached to your just your ego and things like that that it can cause you to um, to be to have pride and you're and you're just not allowing Christ to really work through you and to transform your life because of that ego and that pride that's getting in the way. So um, I would just tell you, um, learn to die to self. And maybe there's some books you can read that can help you with this if if it's not something that. Um, that you feel like is that easy to learn, I would just advise that you um, that you take this one very seriously, and um, and it, it'll help. It'll help a lot um, with your transformation and growth. Then the last one, and this is just one that I thought of as I was walking down to my car. Um, this last one is that the 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 mindset that we need to change is valuing the present over the future. Um, and that's what, that's definitely where I was for um, probably most of my life. And I think just this this last couple years, two or three years, um, I've started trying to shift my person, not my personality, trying to shift my mindset to having more of a um, investment in the future in my mind and um, in my focus. 
And it's something that I'm really trying to focus on this year. I think uh, I've been kind of, you know, trying to trying to shift my mindset over the last couple of years, but this year I'm really trying to put it into action um, to invest in my future, um, in my family's future, and the the future of those around me, and um, and the future of this world, and trying to um, invest in eternity, basically. Um, if you're not doing anything to invest in eternity or to invest in those around you or invest in your future in any way, and if you're just living for the moment and living in this present moment without really having a vision a vision for the future, um, well, you're going to be aimless and you're not going to be transforming. So um, that's about all I have on this video, to be honest. But I just want, uh, want you guys to really... Uh, I mean, rewatch this if you need to, and I just really want you to um, to do to do all you can to transform. And um, I think basically the key takeaway here would be to to let go of yourself, let go of your pride, let go of your appearance, your attachments, and all that, and give them to Christ, and let the light of Christ shine in your life and um, expose you for who you really are. Um, and just try, try to start investing in the future and in eternity. And, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, leave you guys there. And I just want to thank you if you watched this video and if you liked it, please hit the like button, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so. We hope you, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you later. God bless.